We're back with a fresh topic for Watch Debate. Come see what we're discussing this week. Hi, you guys. Awesome to see you. Good to see you too. Literally, nice. my favorite thing in the world is Watch Debate these days. I like unboxing watches, but having a watch conversation with you guys is always full of energy and fun. So. I'm sure that today's will be nothing less. As someone who has a kid, Emily, I'm touched <laughs> that this is your favorite thing. I, uh, I am absolutely tickled. These are always fun. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I mean, Ultimate Watch Collection was great. Your guys' like actual debates towards each other. You may think that this gets heated, but I'll be honest, we are all really good friends. So these conversations are pretty much what we're having like behind closed doors, but now we just open the camera yeah. up to you guys so that you can be a part of it too. So, all right, are you guys ready for this week's topic? Yes. We are discussing the best and unfortunately the worst nicknames for Rolex watches. So you guys have shared a few that we've conversationally Been discussed. waiting for this one. Yeah, and so look, <laughs> it's time. Let's just have the debate. What is the best, what is the worst, and what maybe falls in between? So before we get into this uh, conversation, what are you guys wearing on your wrist today? You wanna start, Ripley? 2007 Breitling Chronomat Evolution. Massive chunking piece of steel, way too big for my wrist. I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, everyone's like, trends are going for smaller watches. This is the time to buy big. Uh, absolutely huge piece. We were proud of you on this purchase. I know that this was really something you felt very deeply in your heart and you went for it and I love it. I have a vision, I've said this before. I'm <laughs> I'm eating a whole of greasy, greasy cheeseburger, wearing a Breitling and a Hawaiian shirt somewhere on the beach. And this is the first step towards realizing yes. that goal. Birthday photo it. shoot, yeah. you're gonna yeah. do it, aren't we'll you? We'll do it. Uh, I love this one. For the sole fact that I can never again pitch a watch and have Ripley tell me that it's too big for his yeah. wrist. Yeah. This is now, open the door to Ripley. You can wear any size watch. Yes, you can. I think it's a cool choice. This is only 44, let's see if about 47. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So good. All right, Justin, what are you wearing? Uh, Tudor uh, FXT. Um, this one's grown on me a lot. Cool watch, right? Yeah. Like, great one. Absolutely yeah, love you're, it. You're going to hate me. If I had bigger wrists, I'd be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make me laugh. I'm wearing a very Emily watch. We've got on a day date. That's nice. Yep. That's a lovely one. 18038. I love the hour markers in this. Yeah. Nice. It looks really sticks. good on that black strap as Thank well. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm in I a little. I feel like black day dates are also underrated as a whole. People always go for like champagne yep. or yeah. white or, you know, some novel color, but like the black and gold is a really classic. Yeah. Yeah. It actually pairs well with a lot of things. So today I brought it out for you guys. This is just what we're wearing here. As always, please be sure to let us know what you guys are wearing. Sound off in those comments. We've definitely seen a wide variety of watches come through, but you guys do not sell us out. You always show up, so be sure to do so again. All right, best and worst Rolex nicknames. I think this is gonna be a good conversation. We all have lots of opinions. Um, There's so many bad ones. Yeah, <laughs> where did, where yeah, did start? Unfortunately, <laughs> you're right. There is definitely more in the bad camp than the good camp, but yep. we'll talk about all of them. I agree, I agree. Before we get to maybe this worst you know, level. Let's talk about the best. Nicknames, there are some good ones, right? Yes. What are your guys' favorites? I have a few favorites. Okay. I don't think I have like a one definitive. But okay. um, if you really pressured me and I had to pick one, I would probably say the Pepsi. It's just a great classic. nickname. It's classic. It has so much history. It kind of you know started it all. If maybe it wasn't the first nickname ever officially, right? It, it really kind of like got the nickname ball rolling, and it's appropriate. It's not a stretch, which for me is one like I lose a lot of points on nicknames that I feel like are a reach, mm -hmm. right? And um, meaning you like more on the nose. Yeah, I feel like if it has to be, I mean, we won't get into the negative ones now, well, there's but. There's on the nose and then two on the nose, where like mm -hmm. I'd say the James Cameron, great nickname, but like that's, it, that dial variant was released to celebrate his accomplishment. Mm -hmm. It's so on the nose yeah. that it's not like based on a color or anything it's like that. It, I mean, it, it's the color of his sub and the dial goes the water, as the light fades, well, you know, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's a tribute to his feet, you know? So okay. right. it almost seems like it could be a formal part of the, watch his name, but it's not in this instance. Yeah, um, so wh when I talk about reaching, um, I'll say like some of the root beers. We'll talk about those later, but some of them, I have a hard time seeing why it's the root beer. <laughs> um, but with the Pepsi, it's not. I feel like when you see it, you instantly know. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact that it's not a watch or model specific nickname. It okay. kind of, you know, it can, it could be a Rolex, it could be a Tudor, it could be a it Seiko, it could be, brands. yeah, exactly, yes. yeah. Um, and, and I like that about it. And it's just, to me, it's kind of effortless and classic. I think it's one of the best nicknames. 
nice. Yeah. Do you have a personal favorite? I mean, I'd have to agree that I think the Pepsi is the most important by a large right. margin. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's transcended the Rolex Canon. It, it's just the Pepsi bezel. It's embraced by other brands who like that style and it took hold because of Rolex. So mm -hmm. it's probably the, you know, the most important. Sure. I don't know if it's my favorite <clears throat> or necessarily the most uh, you know, appropriate, okay. but it's definitely the most important and probably significant, the sure. significant, most significant Rolex nickname. Uh, there's a lot that it reaches. Um, I like the Hulk. Yeah. Ooh, come on. So it, not just because it's green, but because that was with the generation that introduced the larger super case. So it's big, it's all green. If the little green, one with a little bit of green was the Kermit, all big full green was the Hulk. It just made yeah. so much sense. Yeah. Super case, superhero, superhero name. So there you go. Yeah, you know. um, I, I agree. I mean, I think this was less of a debate. I actually agree with Ripley. Whoa! 100%. All right, uh, I think the Hulk is my positive. favorite nickname. Um, I think the Pepsi, like you said, the pe the Pepsi is yeah. probably like the most important one, and um, you know carries a little more weight. But personally, it's the Hulk, right? I yeah. mean, it's a big green watch. And again, when you see it and you see it's the Hulk, you don't have to ask why it's called the Hulk. You yeah. know, just by looking at it. So um, I agree. I think that's one of the ones that's a, a great, great nickname. Yeah. And I always say like, look, it's easy to find things where you have common ground. Like, look, who doesn't like long walks along the beach and like, right. you know, finally <laughs> the dinners. You know, it, I think people have more interesting opinions when it comes to what they don't like. So I'm curious to know sure. what yes. he thinks is the least you know, greatness is greatness. The Pepsi bezel is great. So yes. what is the right. worst? Okay, before we get there, I want to hear Emily's favorite. Oh, thanks, because I really wanted to share it. Look, I love the Paul Newman. I mm. actually love that <clears throat> dial. I also think it kind of falls in this James Cameron line a little bit. Look, that watch was underrated, right? Nobody really liked it. This guy loved it. And just so happened, he now like has a dial that significantly like falls under his name. So I think that one, to me, was really important to learn. But also the connection point on it, I love the vintage root beer. For me, when I first started into watches, understanding nicknames was hard based on the nicknames that existed and the connection point being very far off. Vintage two-tone root beers, to me, were easy to understand. a and was something I drank growing up. I just thought that it was delicious. And so that, I would say, a favorite. A favorite of mine. It was easy, especially with those brown dials and like, look, it just worked. It was perfect together. So. Yeah, I agree. I think the the vintage root beer is really good. And, yeah. and Coke, Pepsi, root beer, it kind of fit soda. in the era yeah. and the soda theme that yeah. they had going it made on. Sense for um, me. Exactly. And the the brown and, and yellow, the brown and gold, yeah. um, was really appropriate, right? You think yeah. A and W was huge at the time. Yeah. Had uh, you know, had their colors. It's a good transition into some of the new ones mm -hmm. that I think are called a root beer that aren't. When I think oh, root beer, I'm talking about Look. the root beer that you're referring to. Yes, this this happens to be, I won't kick off my least favorite, but I, I do not understand kind of how we can call this a root beer. What yes. kind of root beer? I mean, if you're getting a root beer that is largely black with some brown in it, like I-, I You're gonna have some issues later. You should talk to your vendor. Like there is a, there's yeah. a severe problem. Right? And, and what's sad is the nickname has no connection point to this watch that is amazing. This watch is aesthetically beautiful, like technically wonderful. Love this watch. Can't stand the nickname. Associated. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely do better if we're trying to nickname yes. this watch. But I also think we don't have to nickname every watch. No. I feel like we've kind of arrived at this place where we feel like everything needs a yeah. nickname, and we try and force it on that one. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a root beer. When you know, when you see that watch, if you don't know, mm -hmm. and someone's like, "Hey, this is the root beer yes. GMT," you're like, "Uh, yeah, I can kind of see yeah. it, maybe, it, right?" It, like, it was confusing for me when I, uh, you know, trying to navigate all of these reference numbers, yeah. all of these different models. You know, not just Rolex brands, but obviously today's conversation is about it. Why is this a root beer when I know what a root beer is? I couldn't make that connection well, point. Well, and then at what point do we draw the distinction? I'm a fan of like, the, I like the Pepsi because all Pepsi GMTs yes. are known as a Pepsi. Um, the root beer, I get why, oh, it's a brown bezel, let's just call it the root beer. But I'm like, I'm with Justin here. I don't think everything needs a nickname. Mm -hmm. I think in certain instances, it makes a lot of sense. Um, now the reference numbers have distinct letters in them that set them apart. Yeah. So before it was like, what do you have? Oh, I got a 16710. Oh, which one? I got the Pepsi. Oh, I got you know, I got the Coke. Now it's like, the you know, I got the BLNR or the BLRO. Mm -hmm. So. It, you don't, it, they are, don't hold as much importance. Right. And I think it's, it feels like being in season 19 of some television show where the premise is <laughs> run so thin that you're just grasping for straws and you're like, yeah, of course it doesn't make sense. We ran out of stuff that yeah. made sense three seasons ago. And like, I think that's how we get like a rose gold watch with a 
black dial and a black yeah. and brown bezel and it's just grouped into the rooster it category. It feels forced. It and I, I, I would say the beauty of watches and watch collecting is that it can be fun. And I think some of these nicknames just organically come up, right? And they are fun. It's an added Those layer are the good ones. to it. Well, and they're exactly. all informal. I think that's important to know. I honestly feel like you a, a new nickname can't be a real nickname until it's been around for like at least a year yeah. or two. Yeah. Like this isn't Rolex being like, oh, this is the Pepsi, this is the Panda. It's just what, you know, grows and sticks within the collecting yes. community. And so the stuff that was just released a couple months ago, I feel like we can't we can call it whatever we want, but we can't like stamp that as the nickname right. yeah. until we get a little bit further down the line. And it's fun because technically these are all unofficial, right? Sure. Like we use these in conversation, I think I mentioned, but these are all not adopted by the brands. Like it's, these are not on their sites. Like this is right. not it's something the they're marketing thing. and promoting. Yeah. Right. It's the fun mm -hmm. side of collecting for the collector, right? I feel like uh, everyone's like in a race to create the next new nickname, yeah. right? Everyone wants to like, I'm gonna come up with the next big catchphrase. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm gonna nickname this one. And then like the root beer one, I feel like it's just so flooded. I mean, Love anything br anything term. brown is now a root beer, right? It's like, that's kind of where we're at. And it's 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 not as special, it's yeah. not as appropriate. Um, you guys ready to call out some of the worst ones? Yeah, yeah no, this is what I'm most curious about okay. because yeah. I feel like Ripley, this is I'll the, let you kick this we, one off since I did that. I think we all know the... what's gonna be good, but I, I do wanna know what you think is an absolute terrible okay. one. So. Going back to why is the Pepsi a great nickname applies to all of the red and blue ones. Why have we nicknamed one the Batgirl and one the Batman? Oh, and so I understood why it came about when they had first changed over the bracelet style, but once the bracelets became available for both models, mm -hmm. it just created this weird distinction that then didn't wasn't reflected in the Pepsi variants. Right. You didn't have the Pepsi and the Pepsi Max or the Diet Pepsi or the <laughs> Pepsi No Cal or you know it, it, it just it kind of threw a monkey wrench into what was otherwise a kind of coherent naming convention. Yeah. I would rather call the black and brown GMTs root beers than the, like the a Jubilee Sadly bracelet angry. variant, which has nothing to do with the reference number, the watch even a, a, a Batgirl versus a Batman. Mm. That's got to be one of my all-time least favorites. Yeah. It seemed like the biggest reach we've that that started this other series of reach. Yeah. It was a chain reaction of reaches, and that's patient zero. I agree. There is no Batgirl. There's no Batgirl. There, there's stop actually saying Batgirl. literally no Batgirl. There's no in, Batgirl. In the name of equality, there, there, yes, there is. Please stop there. with the Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. Yeah, I think it's pointless. It's very forced. We don't need another nickname. And Batman, that's a good nickname. I didn't put it on the top of the list as my favorite, but. I like it. I mean, it looks like, you know, it kind of fits the superhero theme. It's black and blue. You instantly get it. It's cool. It feels like it should belong to that watch. Um, Batgirl, just one of the biggest reaches ever. Um, and where do we draw the line? If I put my, uh, if I have a Batman, but I put it on a NATO, do I get to make a new nickname for it? Because now nicknames are apparently just, you know, being changed with bracelets. Yeah. I, well, I, and then I also, I, I'm not even a big fan of the Batman one. I, I, I like it way better than most. What, what if they did like a, like a black and yellow one? Mm. Right. That, that seems very Batman. Yeah. That seems even more Batman than a black and blue signal one. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you know. Signal. <laughs> I don't know it was a Batman. Yeah, the bad signal. <laughs> the bad Pittsburgh signal. like. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Like I'm not the nickname. No, person, I, 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 I don't know. Like I said, I don't think everything needs a nickname. Right. But again, this you don't get to choose your nickname. It's kind of what people want to call right. you, which yeah. could have been good or bad in high school. Yeah. And so now, look, this is the Batman. Unfortunately, it's the back girl. I'm gonna do what I can to just bury that. Yeah. But like, it, it, I think it doesn't make sense given just the inconsistencies that exist within the yeah. collection. Yeah. So I that agree. might be one of my all-time least yep. favorites. Uh, it was one of my all-time least favorites uh, also, but I will throw another one in that hat. Okay, please do. The zombie. Oh goodness. I don't even recognize uh, that. I mean, Absolutely is this the one, not. two, six, seven, one, three, the new, yes. but newly discontinued Tell them what the GMT. zombie is. I mean, it's the new GMT. It's the right. gray, the, the gray, gray and black, black split yeah. bezel yeah. one. Uh, um, I, I can't, it I, doesn't, it's not rational. Every me. time I see it, and I, when I first saw it, I thought this is just, one guy online thought he was being I called clever, you guys, I told and, you. and I'm like, that's not a nickname. Like, no one's saying that. And I then, thought it was a joke. It yes. had been adopted by many collectors and you know right. brands speaking to and writing about it. And even you were like, no way, this I'm, is I'm not, not happening. I'm personally I'm like, not going to recognize that. I don't recognize it. that. I'm just going to like absolutely turn a blind eye to that one. And if that's the one that ends up in like two years, if that's the nickname that has just you, it, that's the go-to one. 
I guess we'll have to call it that. And I don't hate the nickname. I mean, I hate the nickname. I really hate the nickname. <laughs> but I don't hate the nickname if we want to go really meta with it because this is basically the black and gray bezel version of the original stainless steel ceramic bezel mm. GMT from 2007 right. that was discontinued to make way for the split color versions. Now this watch coming back now with a black and gray bezel and a new movement and whatever, it does feel like the zombie version. It's the black, the grayed out version of the watch we had before. That is way too deep for a nickname. Yes, no yes. one is gonna understand that the, the average person. So right. I, I, it's too far of a reach. Yeah, right? I, I'm, we can call it's it not, something again, else. With the background, stop, there's no zombie. Stop yeah. calling it the zombie. But what are we gonna call it then? No zombie. We're gonna call it We don't it have to call it, it anything. We don't have to call it anything. We yeah. don't have to call it anything. Like you said, if, if the watch warrants and earns a nickname, yeah. Fantastic, like the Hulk. That just came organically and yeah. it fits and it's great. The zombie, it's the, the complete opposite. Someone's yeah. racing to get a nickname and trying to force it into this and it's just, it, it's just stop. Like, There's one that the audience called out for us a little bit ago that I think we have to have a conversation about super quickly and that is a la the Cookie Monster, right? Um, oh, equally bad. <laughs> Terrible. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, because you guys have brought up the point like, look, Batman, if it's black and blue, like, how are we not speaking to this in the same context, right? And I guess even more so, Smurf. Like, the Smurf nickname, maybe not amazing. Love the watch again, but the nickname itself, they're. It's, it's hard to, it's been adopted, right? But I think that they could use a, a rename, honestly. Okay, the Smurf makes way more sense than the Cookie Monster. Yes. If we're gonna go it's, there. It's like Papa Smurf, because he's the big one. You well, know? he's got red, if I'm not mistaken. I think in the normal Smurf oh, yeah, color scheme, right. they go like white with the hat, blue with the face, white with maybe their trousers yeah. or something. If you look at the Smurf Samariner, you got like white on the bracelet from the white gold, blue with the dial and bezel, white down there. I can, and it's that flat glossy blue. I can kind of get digestible. down with the Smurf nickname. Cookie Monster, it, 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 it looks five? more like a BMW logo. And if they, okay, if they did True. tinted loom, they did like orange tinted loom, it looked like the cookies on the dial. Mm -hmm. That looks like Cookie Monster. This is just black and black and blue sub. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's like, it's black and blue. Let's, all right, everyone brainstorm. What's black and blue? We're gonna get this thing nicknamed today, right? That's what it feels like. Um, yeah. Cookie Monster's not good. Smurf, I don't really like. That one's in like the C minus category for me. Yeah, like it's, it's not, not a hate so hate, but I don't think it's great. You know, if it was like the old Tudor sub size, like a 33 mil Ooh. all blue, and it was size so it was kind of size it. would be good, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would think it a little more appropriate. Um, but okay, on that, let's say what is worse, the Starbucks nickname or the Sermit nickname for oh, the same wow. watch. Uh, both bad. They're both a Kermit <laughs> to me. Both both of them. Both of them get rejected. Going get back to the GMT thing, if we're gonna go with the red and blue as the Pepsi, the green on black, we can call it the ceramic Kermit. I'm not, we, Sermit. Okay Sermit sounds Sermit. so lame. Sermit yeah. sounds like something you fix your driveway yes. with. We're yeah, not yeah. gonna <laughs> do yeah. that. And you have to explain it, right? Like yeah, you, you tell do. someone who has no idea about watches yeah. or nicknames or anything and you tell them it's the Sermit, you have to give a lengthy explanation on why it's a, a Sermit. You show them the Hulk, there's no explanation. I think it's just personal disdain and having to call something that I enjoy something maybe I don't enjoy. You know yeah. what I mean? Slightly off topic, where do you draw the panda line in panda dials? That is a good this one. This is a big one. I think we're gonna have some split opinions. So I've heard so many different things. Yeah. Ranging from, it's only vintage Paul Newman Daytona references because they're the mm. only ones with the white with fully black contrast. Right. And yeah. What do you call the current ones or the previous gen with the ceramic bezel? And some people call the silver ones with because they got the black registers. I know. Really? Some of them with just the, the just yeah. the rings. Find yeah. me a metallic silver panda friend. Right. But like well, that's a whole other concept. But yeah. like, yeah, where do you draw where do you draw the panda line? For me, and this is an interesting one, for me, it's Daytona gotta have white dial and black sub dials. Mm -hmm. That's the panda. All black? Yes. So the new ones the aren't new panda. The rings. To me, the new one's not a panda. And I know, and, and this one, I'm a little, you know, that's my personal, but I'm accepting of other views. It could be the snow leopard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Dalmatian. for me, it's like, uh, you know, it's the panda, it's the reverse panda, it is what it is. But we get into silver and we get into just the rings and whatever. Um, I, I, sorry, it's not a panda. I mean, it's great, but it's, huh. it's not a panda. What about some of the old ones? You, if you guys are throwing out opinions on these, like, what about like Steve McQueen? One of the worst nicknames of all time. So bad, I, I will not recognize I, that. that one, one of the best watches of all time, with coupled the worst with the worst nickname, nickname of yeah. all time. 
And it's uh, so inappropriate. You can you can debate me until the end of the world about whether or not the blue and black white gold sub looks like Cookie Monster. Mm -hmm. The dude never wore the watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not even There's like an existing and, print out of him yes. with the watch like superimposed yes. into it. And as know? a new person into watches, I felt at a disadvantage trying to adopt that nickname. Like, oh yeah, the Steve McQueen and you know, going to meetups and talking to people about it. And it's like, I sounded uneducated, right? I physically had to get called out to get educated that like, you do know he never wore this, right? Right. And so then having to dig in and really understand the history with the watch itself, because it's a freaking awesome watch, yeah. right? Never wore it. Why um, are we calling it that? Yeah, we shouldn't. Has uh, no connection, again. I, I kind of like the fact that it exists. I also like the fact that it's not super used like i see people referring to that watch often and not okay. and more often than not they're not leading with steve mcqueen right okay. um and i think it is an interesting piece of history and it's interesting how it worked out and the nickname came to be so i actually kind of just like that little bit of history i guess okay. but yeah it's a bad nickname like <laughs> <laughs> i mean it that that's kind of a pre prerequisite right like yeah. if you're gonna name it after someone they really need to have worn it or been involved or have like yeah. some big piece of influence on the watch, like the James Cameron, right? It's a good, the Paul Newman, those are mm -hmm. better examples. Steve McQueen? Well, nah. I, yeah, and I, why I really don't like that one is because if you look at a lot of the vintage nicknames for the, specifically for vintage iterations, whether it's like the Bart Simpson, the Great White, the Double mm. Red, the Single Red, right. uh, Comex, all of this related to defining a certain characteristic of that dial that wasn't unique to right. the model itself. Like, how do you know which seed dweller? Oh, I got the Great White. Sure. And so it came around through that kind of common parlance. And I feel like we're trying too hard with the modern references where there are distinct ways between to note, to note between them. But like, when you look at some of the vintage nicknames, it's like, well, look, I don't love the Bart Simpson nickname, but what do you call that style of coronet dial? Right. You know, like, uh, something. Yeah. And you need to be named something, so it's called, called this, rather than mm -hmm. like Mark 4.5 or something, you yeah, know, ridiculous yeah. <laughs> like that. But it that the Steve McQueen, no one was like, what Explorer 2? It was the first Explorer 2. You could have yeah. just called it the reference number. You could have called it that weird one with the 24-hour dial no one wanted, but now it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could have called it anything. So it seemed super forced. That might be like the archetype of the original first four, forced yes. Rolex nickname you, that no one needed. If you said the Rolex Explorer 2, there was no questioning on which watch you were talking right. about. It was one watch, that's right. it, right? Like, you didn't need to differentiate well, between different explorers. Well, they kept that model explorers. going for, for a while as well. It wasn't like they switched it up for the first few years. Anytime in the 70s, you could have been like the Explorer 2. You'd sure. be like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me ask a question too before we wrap this completely up. Rolex seems to have naturally adopted a ton of nicknames. Why do other brands not have nicknames, you know, organically arise. Do you guys have a theory in any way? I think part of it is what Ripley said. Like we talk about, you know, if I'm if I'm telling you about my Submariner, that can mean dozens of different yeah. watches, right? Um, if I'm telling you about my Smurf or my Hulk, mm -hmm. you know, right? Um, and like Ripley said, nowadays they've done more to differentiate between in terms of model yes. numbers and things like that. Um, but letters. I felt like that's kind of how it came to be, right? Like even in the old, the uh, you know, the, the vintage times where it was like, oh, it's a fat lady. Like that was different than like yeah. a regular GMT. Um, so I think that's kind of where it started and there was a need for it. And now it's kind of just, it's a fun thing. People like nicknames, yes, right? And yes. Rolex being the ones where there was a lot, they kind of were spearheading the nickname campaign, I guess you could say, um, that it's just kind of followed along. But yeah, you're right. I would like to see other uh, other brands kind of earning some nicknames yeah. and kind of getting in on the action. In my understanding, like if other brands have more watches in circulation, right? They're being worn, they're being loved by people. How do more of those not adopt organic nicknames? Yeah. You know? Well, I think some of it is just Rolex's consistency. The sub, most of their collections have been around decades and decades and decades with very History. little okay. variation between them. So you need, people refer to it as the quickest thing possible. Right. Mm -hmm. So when someone's like, oh, I have a Speedmaster, which one? The Moonwatch. Okay, well, which one? Then they just say the movement. Oh, I got the 3861. Okay, right. the current gen. And I think that's kind of how the Rolex nickname started. I think for other brands, they actually just have to do a better job of designating which one. It's like, which which Hamilton khaki do you have? Oh, the field mechanical, right. good. I don't yeah. need to, be, which white dial, black dial, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't need to go be like the, this, you know, arcane nickname that's a reach. And then the other is just Rolex is Rolex. They're the single most famous watch manufacturer. Mm -hmm. sure. 
let alone luxury watch manufacturer. And so with that many people who don't know the reference numbers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. talking about the watches, you need that kind of common parlance okay. in the same way that no one is going to ever remember Omega reference numbers no matter how much no. you love the watches. Right. Well. Um, I, I like the other brand nicknames. And I mean, just thinking off the top of my head, the ones I can think of are, uh, I don't think they're bad nicknames. All those I think are pretty good. We, I mean, let's, let's start with the Ripley. Right, like we have the Seiko from the Aliens movie, the Ripley. Um, we got the, Apoc the the Captain Willard one. Yeah, which from yeah. the Apocalypse. We have now. the Arnie and the Ghostbusters we're, and we're, some of these. These are a lot of Seikos. Yeah, this oh, is we're, like a bunch of Seiko we got nicknames. The jumbo. But, we got the Jumbo, the which jumbo. is technically like a formal or name for AP. The yeah. Hamilton uh, Elvis is kind of a cool Ooh, one, yeah. and that's very specific, right? Um, but all those. I, I don't really hear any of those nicknames, and rather it's because it was in a, a specific film or on a, a, a specific mm -hmm. actor or musician or whatever. Like, I don't really think like, ah, oh, now that's forced and, and kind of weird. I'm like, oh yeah, I like it, it makes sense. Does some of it come down to perhaps the actual names of the models themselves just already being distinguishable enough and good that they don't warrant a nickname? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about IWC and like, I have a pilot's watch, which one? Oh. The like the Lake Tahoe one. Everyone knows you mean the white ceramic version, and right. like Lake Tahoe sounds rad. If it was just a disastrous reference number, I'm sure it would have a nickname too. Yeah, okay. um, I know we've talked a lot about nicknames we don't like, but yeah. I feel like we missed one of the best nicknames uh, because it often gets overlooked: the president. Oh, so. That's a good call. President is technically a nickname, right? I mean, it is. Because it was worn by the president and it got to be known as, mm -hmm. you know, the president. I mean, Rolex refers to that watch as the day date. Not, yeah. It's not the president. That, so that the president is only in the, the bracelet. bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Which so, is kind of that back roll conversation yeah. a little bit, but it does have some authority. Sure. And it does really distinguish the watch, you know? Yeah. The difference between a day date, this is not a president, right? Right. This is a day date, but if it had the presidential bracelet on right. it, then this would warrant it being president. Well, and I think that part of why the president's such a great nickname is because it transcends the day date. You can get a lady or mid-sized date yes. just with right. a president bracelet and it's a lady or mid-sized president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of a fantastic one. And again, it's sort of probably about as official as you get considering that the bracelet itself is now called the president yeah. bracelet. Yeah. So yeah, that that is a that is a great one. That probably the most widely yeah, used. Yeah. 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 Even though you don't think game. about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. We really didn't. Yeah, yeah a signed executive order for the president. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, all in all, really fun conversation. There is some to debate here, guys. Like, did we hit the nail on the head when it comes to some of the best nicknames and even some of the worst? Do you guys fall into line with some of the ones Ripley mentioned? Are you more team Justin or are you more team yourself? Be sure to let us know what nicknames you are favorable to and maybe some that you are unfavorable to. I'm expecting some discussion Lots on this one. Comments, yeah, leave please. us some comments. We will get back to you on some of um, your guys' feedback too, as always. So thank you for joining this, you know, watch debate. Thank you guys for always fun. Yeah, bringing absolutely. the heat as always. We will be back with a fresh episode sometime soon. So until then, everybody, be well.